Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Worn Edges Part 5, Curvature in Blender. So a trick I've used for years inside of 3ds Max is procedural edge wear, basically chipping paint off of a surface around the edges to reveal metal underneath. Rather than hand painting all the chips, I use a procedural noise assigned to a curvature map, and then use hand paint to fix up any issues. It's far faster than painting them all myself, and more flexible as well. So when I started playing with Blender, this was another shader trick I knew I needed to replicate, and sure enough it worked. In fact, due to the interactive renderer, it was even easier to dial than it was in Max. So here's my recipe for the effect inside of Blender. So before going into the shader, I just want to show you the geometry we're going to use. And uh, this is a robot tire tread. And you can see here that we have a subdivision surface modifier on top of here. And that just adds more curvature around these edges, which we're going to use uh, inside of the shader to uh, put the um, um, chipped paint around these edges. So while you don't have to do this, it does work without a subdivision modifier. I just wanted to mention that um, adding this does uh, make the end result look nicer in my opinion. So something to consider when you're using this technique and uh, when you're actually creating the model itself. Okay, so let's work through this material. So the very first thing we have is the material itself, which is then hooked into a mix shader. And what a mix shader does is it mixes between two different shaders using a black and white mask, which is this stuff up here. And in this case, we have the green, which represents the paint material, and then we have a gray, which represents the metal. Now, of course, in a real shader, you would have something much more complex than just this. Uh, you'd have uh, base color in here, and you'd have a bump map and that kind of stuff. But since uh, this tutorial is really about the mask that blends between these two, I've just made these really simple. So we're going to start off with the mask, and the first thing we want to discuss is the uh, noise, uh, which is right here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, instead of pumping it all the way through the material, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to pump this directly into the surface. So you can see what the noise looks like by itself without uh, all the other factors going on. So to make the noise, um, started off with a texture coordinate set to object, and this is so that this procedural 3D noise um, assigns itself to the object itself. So if the object moves, it will actually stick, uh, the pattern will stick to the surface. And then that gets pumped into the vector. And then the vector uh, of the mapping node allows you to change the size, which is what we have going on here. Um, and then it, we pump the vector of this into the vector of the noise texture itself. And then there we can set uh, factors like uh, scale, which works in tandem with the scale down here, roughness, detail, and that sort of thing in order to get this kind of material. Now the next thing is that this by itself is not really looking like a chipping material and that's because there's a lot of gray in here. It's not really like you want something that's very contrasty, really black and white. So in order to do that, uh, we pump this into a color ramp, and the color ramp allows you to clamp the material. Clamping meaning making it uh, the blacks a lot blacker and the whites a lot whiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this here, and I'm going to drag this out and then pump this into the surface. And so now you can see what happens here. So these values here, um, and if you pull this, you can see how it gets uh, changed. So these values here are what gives uh, the clamping value. And now this looks more like little chips of paint going on. So the next part we want is the curvature part. So down here is the part that handles the uh, noise. And then this part up here is the curvature. And so we create a geometry node uh, inside of the material and we grab the pointiness, which is the curvature. And if you want, we can just drag this over here to look at this. And you can, it's tough to see, but you can see there's a little bit of lightness and a little bit of darkness going on here. And the reason for that is that, again, we need to clamp it. So we take it and we put it into a color ramp, much like we put the, um, the noise into a color ramp. And then let me grab the result of this and put it in there. And you can see by clamping this uh, with these values here, we're able to get a really strong black and white. Black is the flat surfaces and white is the edge surfaces. Um, for this curvature. And then the next step is we want to take this value and we want to take the noise value and we want to combine them. And so that's what's going on here in this multiply node. So let me just take the results of this and put this over there. And you can see what's going on here is that it's set to multiply. 
And what it's doing is it is saying, okay, so um, everywhere that is, uh, the curvature is uh, convex, and everywhere where there is noise, we multiply those two values together, and the result is we see the noise, but we only see the noise in the areas of the convex curvature, which gives this result right here. And then one final note uh, for this mask is instead of using this uh, by itself, we then clamp the whole result a uh, third time. I mean, third time in the sense we've clamped this result, we've clamped this, this result, and now we're also going to clamp the result of this. And so let me just throw that over there. And all this does is it gives just a little bit more control over really getting that hard edge and so that these chips of paint um, really looks like chips of paint inside of here. So uh, we take this and we put this into the factor of the mix shader, uh, which again is blending between these two guys. And then the end result goes inside of here and there are the results. Now one thing about doing this inside a blender that I really liked is the interactive portion of this. So for example, let's say I'm not quite sure what size of noise I want. If I go here and I mess with the overall scale, I see the results completely in real time. And the same for any of these things too. So I can pull this here to get more or less uh, noise going on. I can pull this you know, here if I wanted to uh, attach more to where the, the curvature is. And I'm seeing all the results happening right in front of me here. And the same with all these other ones. Now I know you can technically do this in 3ds Max. Uh, there are a number of renderers that have interactive renderers, but um, the first time I used those interactive renderers, and this was years and years ago, it, it was incompatible with a lot of material properties. And so I kind of just gave up on using them. I didn't use them very much. And uh, inside of Blender, it's just so easy to turn on the interactive renderer and play with this. So I'm sure that you know if you really want to, inside of 3ds Max, you can set up this sort of interactivity uh, using um, your favorite renderer. But this was the first time that I really ran into uh, doing this when I started learning Blender. And it makes it just so much easier. Like before, in order to get this result, I had to do render after render after render. And even if it was fast, it's not nearly the same thing as being able to do this you know, like this, where I can really dial in the shape and size of these different um, paint chips. So have to say, very, very impressed with uh, the way Blender lets me do that. So anyway, next time you need uh, paint chip material, hopefully uh, this will tell you how to go about doing it inside of Blender. And really impressed with it overall, and I'm glad that I was able to replicate it in uh, the new software. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. And if you want more videos like this, uh, feel free to go to neilblevins.com and the art lessons section um, that has a whole bunch of videos and written tutorials. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.